you know, really nothing different than what we talked about, those of you there at the game the other day. I mean, just, just what we expected going into Manhattan, you know, against a, a very well-coached football team with, uh, with quite a bit of purpose on mind, uh, not just as a football team, but as a university. So I was, I was really, yeah, I don't want to say please, but I, we got what we expected, you know, out of our team, uh, particularly on the offensive side with five new starters you know, going on the road for the first time with a quarterback and center being two of them. I thought those guys uh, handled the situation extremely well. And, you know, we felt all along that, um, you know, Bryce's demeanor, you know, and his poise would show. And, and I, I thought he was exceptional for a, a road game with that atmosphere. And then I thought it was a complete team win. You know, to overcome a couple of things that we had happen in the third quarter uh, and still come out of there with a win is – is impressive. You know, we can play a lot better, we can be a lot better, but we got a good, tough road win in conference. That's always a good thing. John Warner, Waco Tribune here. Art, uh, Iowa State's lost a couple really tight games in the Big 12. Uh, just what, what do you expect from them you know, coming in this week? Well, I mean, and the key word you said right there is Big 12. I mean, anytime you get in conference play, I mean, anything can happen because everybody's got history with each other. I mean, it's you know we're playing people that we played a long time, we recruited against, we got we got history with them. We know, you know, a lot of their players and coaches and schemes and you know how they approach things from a philosophical and, and schematic standpoint. So that that you know blends to uh, having these type of games that you get into in conference. Play. I mean, the last three times we played them, we're one and two. I mean, they're a good football team and they're they're a tough football team and they. You know, they play extremely well. So, you know, we've got our work cut out for us, you know, here at home. I mean, we – I think beat them here in 2011, but it was a lot closer game than, than what, you know, the score looked like. We had an 86-yard fumble return for a touchdown and, you know, ended up winning there toward the end. So, it's, it's going to be a battle, and we know that. Coach Mark Schleyball with ESPN. Hi, Mark. Hey, um, you look around the country, some of the traditional powers like Notre Dame, Florida – USC, Texas have struggled at the quarterback position in the last few years. How have you guys been able to go from RG3 to Nick to now Petty to and even going back to Houston with, with Cobb and Keenum? What are what are some of the, the attributes you guys look for when identifying quarterbacks? You know, I like, I like guys that are competitors. And I like guys that are fearless and that are very intelligent. And, and those five you mentioned all fall in that category. Uh, and then I also like guys that are mature. You know, the the thing that's impressed me about Bryce is that, you know, he's, you know, he's he's waited his turn and uh, he's done it the right way by improving while he's not playing, you know, mentally and physically, uh, getting his body right, getting his mind right, and then when his time came, he was ready. So, uh, I think that would, that's critical in his development, and every one of those those guys' stories are different, but, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, we're five games in. Um, you know, after ten games. Then I think we'll be able to tell, you know, exactly, you know, where we're at and how we're going to be. I mean, we're we're still, in my opinion, just just starting to learn about our football team uh, because it's still early. It's early for us. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib. Art, I was talking with Stefan Huber last week about the tempo of the offense, and he mentioned that in practice it's even uh, quicker. That you know, sometimes in the game they have to actually wait on the ref to spot the ball and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Just how imperative is it for you to to maybe replicate or even amp up uh, tempo in practice so that you know you have that mindset when you go into a game? I mean, Bryce, it's just how we practice. You know, it's what we do, and uh, it's what we've always done. So when we get in the game, it is slower. You know, because it should be slower. I mean, we want our games to be like practice. I mean, that's the way we want it to feel. You know, we want to see what we've seen. We want to, you know, react like we've reacted. And we want to make plays like we should make plays, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, when we get in the game, there's there's some some hesitancy, you know, from the, you know, the presentation standpoint because you are having to wait on change in an official or in practice. You know, we're rolling. I mean, we got the best managers in America, quite honestly. Those guys are unbelievable setting the ball and, and getting out of the way and just, just going. So it's good. And, and the thing that we did through the first four or five weeks is we, we practiced for a game. You know, and that's why I'm saying we're still in the infant stages of our season because that was the first complete game we played. 
And, but we've been practicing, you know, for those scenarios because we haven't been able to do them up to this point. Now, you know, it's all changed now, but we were ready when the time came. Coach John Morris, Baylor Radio. Along those lines, have you noticed, or what have you noticed, I guess, through the first two league games about the eighth official and, and that process? You know, I, I, I mean, it's got pros and cons. Um, I think it has helped speed up the game, which is what we wanted. You know, that was, that was why I voted yes on it. Um, I, I think it's a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. I think it's a lot smarter from an official standpoint. I mean, those guys, their eyes are better. They can see more. They're not in the way. Chances of them getting hurt are diminished because it's dangerous in there when teams are tempoing and there's a bunch of big bodies moving around. Those men are having to get out of the way. So I think from that standpoint, it's been good. It, it has increased some calls. You know, I mean, that's, that's evident, you know, because you got another set of eyes back there that, that's watching, you know, in the interior where normally you just have the referee here and you got an umpire here. I mean, now you got another guy here. So they're all watching, you know, what's going on. And it's, it's increased from a penalty standpoint, which, you know, it's, that's the way it is. But the trade off is good. I think, I think it's smart and I think it's safe for the officials. Cherry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Are you, you've always spread the ball around, but you usually have that one go to guy. Seems like this year you've had two guys that have really stepped up. Did that surprise you at all, though, that obviously Tevin being one of them, but Antoine being the second guy? I mean, Jerry, I mean, we would like to think we have, you know, more than two go to guys, quite honestly. Uh, you know, um, I think everybody on our team has a role. I mean, Cyril's a go to guy to me. You know, and Spencer Durango. I mean, those are go-to guys in critical situations. If you don't believe it, look at our first fourth down in the game the other day. I mean, there's a reason that Bryce ran the sneak behind 68. He's a go-to guy. You know, so we everybody's got a role that they play, and and these guys all have to find a way to contribute. I mean, Glasgow's role the other day was to help us grind out and win the football game at the end, along with our old line, and and he did it. So uh, I think it's all situational. And is this what their role is asked to be? Lee Small, News Channel 25. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you about Lake's maturity level from since he got to this program to now. Um, last year expressed some displeasure when he wasn't getting enough touches, but seems to be much more of a, a team guy this year. Just wanted to you know, ask what you've seen some, from him since he's gotten here. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what his quotes were last year. You'd have to read them to me and, and show me that he said them, but. You know, he's always been a great team guy, in my opinion, um, and that's, that's never going to change. I think his spirit and his soul are, are certainly for the whole and not for himself. And, you know, I think as, as you do mature and as you are involved in the program longer, you understand how important it is to be part of a team and not the team. And, you know, I think that just comes with, with growth and experience. Like I say, you can have all the money in the world, but you can't buy experience. You've got to live it. And, um, you know, those, those guys live it, they grow up, and they understand. That's why when old guys get in critical games, they make plays because they've, they've got good experience to fall back on. Chad Conine, 24-7 Sports. Uh, Coach, Iowa State dropped numbers in, in, in the passing game, um, gave up numbers in the running game against Texas Tech. Does that give you an idea, help you know how to, uh, they might try to stop you guys? You're talking about when, when they're on defense? Um, yeah, I'm sure they'll be pretty similar to what they were last year. I mean, last year we, we put 21 points on them. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they felt like they – and they did do a great job of, of defending us as they have every year we played them. I mean, they're very well coached on that side of the ball. Uh, Wally's, you know, a 40-year veteran. He does a great job. And, and they've always prided themselves defensively. Uh, you know, they're – Really, a mentality very similar to a Kansas State football team. I mean, they're just they're tough, hard-nosed, good football players that, that play extremely hard, kind of like us. Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. Art, you talked about guys doing roles, and you mentioned Glasgow. Seems like the carries have been up the last couple of games. How close is he to being the guy we saw last year, and, and what does him being back kind of do for you guys in terms of that role yeah I, I think he's healthy I think he's completely back and and like I said my my hat's off to Mike Sims and the training staff for for getting him back and, and keeping us calm and patient which is hard to do during the season but but we did it we listened 
Uh, Coach Levy did a great job with him of, of helping him and holding him in practice to where we could peak him at the right time. So now we've got a routine with him through practice to where, you know, barring anything on game day, he should always be ready. Um, I, I think he's completely back. Having him back in our offense gives us, you know, the thing Glasgow brings is toughness, passion, energy, and inspiration. That's what he brings, plus athletic ability. He's good. Uh, so when he's a downhill runner, and if the hole is little, he can squeeze it and get something out of it. Uh, so he's, you know, he's, he's a critical part of our offense, without question, of our football team. Art, you guys had uh, some trouble stopping the run the last game. W what do you have to do there to maybe kind of shore that up? You know, I'm just, I mean, we're playing good people. Yeah, and, you know, when you play good people, you just, you got to pick your game up a little bit, which, you know, we will. And had, hadn't really been challenged in that category up till this week. You know, somebody just line up and really try to run the football at you from a quarterback standpoint because most of those are plus one runs, you know, because you count for everybody but the quarterbacks. So you can get a blocker in front of him, which, you know, in football terms, it's called plus one. And, and it makes it a little tougher defensively. So, um, you know, they, we're, we just have to play better. You know, we got the W, and that's, that's really the, the bottom line. I mean, we're, we've never been concerned with stats offensively or defensively other than the one that matters. That's a W at the end of the day. Um, Parmita Shahosini, Baylor Lariat. Can you talk about the impact of special teams, especially in close games? Yes, I can. And, um, you know, like I said, we looked death in the face the other day and, and said not today. You know, it's what we did. Because what happened to us in the third quarter, if you're on the road and you get a punt blocked, it's about 90% that you do not do not win the football game. And and that's that's why I'm saying it was we showed a lot of maturity as a team because those things, not only um, deep you're talking about prior to that or, you know, when Ahmad got the pick, I mean, that's, that's ball game. A couple of sequences to that is that we'd got the ball back down on about our eight or ten and made two first downs. You know, so we moved it out to around the 35, 40 yard line. Spencer Durango was outstanding the whole day. He had a great punt, put them back on the 20 with a little over four minutes left with no timeouts, which put them in a predicament, you know, from a mentality standpoint, they got to put the ball up in the air. And so instead of them being on, on their own 40 and then trying to work down for a tying field goal or go ahead touchdown, they're backed up on their 20 and it, it changes the whole mentality of, of the game. And so, Spencer did a great job there, and then, of course, Ahmad's pick was, you know, a classic pick. I mean, there's, that's an outstanding play by an outstanding player. But the defense made a big stop when we had to. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line, and it's a team game. Chris Brown, Warren, Mike, Gordon, Wang, and Austin. I've been watching you guys from afar. <coughs> I think this is out there, but what I have seen is sometimes it's easy for me to forget that Bryce is, you know, that was his first road start. You, I mean, you talked about his maturity a little bit already, but does he ever surprise you, or do you ever find yourself just not worrying about him and wondering, man, like this kid is, you know, not good? He's good. Now he's good, and um, and what makes him good is that he's uh, like us. He's very calm, and and he's and he's he's a very confident kid in a very humble way, which is what I really appreciate. You know, a good quick example the other day, and we're trying to work the clock a little bit because we really hadn't been in a scenario where we you know work the clock at the end of a game you know, to, to run the time down because we're usually tempo and, and we just hadn't had it throughout this season where we're doing that and where it mattered. Um, and so we were going over some things that we'd talked about, you know, in, in meetings and practice and stuff. And, you know, I'm probably the uncalm one. And I'm running, you know, I'm out there trying to get his attention and, you know, and he, he runs over to me and I'm saying, hey, now, you know, we got to, you know, I just kind of point to the clock and he says, coach, I'm going to break him at 10, we'll snap it at 2. I said, you got it. You got it. That's it, you know. And I turned around and thought, that's, that's pretty good. You know, for a guy in that scenario, first time ever, you know. Uh, so that's, that's reassuring to not only us, but to those, those guys around him because they feel it. You know, I mean, you, you can get lost in a situation like that in a hurry, and, and he really did a great job. Well, you'd like to think that you would, you know, and I, if I could think of a couple of scenarios where we did, maybe Colorado 2010, 
you know, we, we won that game late. They had the ball late. We won it uh, on the road. Um, I mean, I mean, Texas 2010, uh, you know, it was a close road win. Uh, so, and then, you know, of course, the, the miracle game nobody saw, the Kansas game 2011, you know, those, those are all – now, now it would be nice if we could name about 12, you know, we can't. But to answer your question is, you know, I think it shows the, what, what we talked about earlier about experience. You know, I mean, you got to live some things to be able to do some things. And in 2011, we go up there in the same scenario and, and do not get out of there with a win. Why? Because at that t time in our program, you know, we, we hadn't won two bowl games in a row. You know, we hadn't been recognized as a, a very formidable football opponent to, that people respected. You know, so our, our mentality was different. People's mentality about us was different. And, and our expectations throughout the game were a little bit different. I mean, we're, we were operating on, on a, lot of, um, a lot of talent, a lot of energy, and, uh, you know, just, just a, maybe a little bit of hope. You know, I hate to use that word, but that, that's really the reality of it. Whereas now, you know, we, we got a pretty good predictable outcome. I mean, we, we've been in a lot of scenarios and won a lot of tough football games since that Kansas State game in 2011. You know, I know you guys want to win every time out, but do you use those kind of things as motivation for the guys? You know, hey, you want to send me a bombs out, you know, with a nice homecoming win? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, yes, we do. That, I mean, I mean, yeah, whatever works. <laughs> No, Coach, you mentioned we're your playing hard for with, 60 minutes to win. I can promise you that. You mentioned your conversation with Bryce near the end of the game uh, on on Saturday, and that was a series where you ran with Glasgow. I don't know four or five, six straight times. Mm -hmm. You get first downs and then break break loose. From a coaching standpoint, is that almost was it as or maybe more satisfying than a 93 yard touchdown pass? Uh, yeah, I mean, without question. I mean, because of the predicament. I mean, it was a predictable situation. I mean, they knew what we were, we were going to do. We knew what we were going to do, and we were able to do it. So, I mean, to me, that falls on our offensive line. It falls on our strength conditioning program, and it falls on the mentality of our football team and a guy that's tough like Glasgow, you know, carrying the rock. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. So what is impressive is that we, we do have the ability to go 93 yards in one play, but we can also line up and be physical when we need to be physical. And so that, that's a good thing. Coach, what's the value of a Clay Fuller, an older guy that, that seems like he does a lot of, lot of good things for you? I mean, just, just that, maturity. And, and Clay's a great athlete. You know, we got – I mean, we, we have three or four guys that – I mean, we're, you know, talking earlier about, you know, having a couple go-to guys, something like that. I mean, like I said, we've got a bunch of guys that can really make plays. And just when that situation, you know, comes for them, they'll, they'll be able to do it. And, and he's, he's very talented and, you know, his day's out there somewhere. You know, it's going to happen sometime for him and about two or three others that, you know, just hadn't happened yet. Art, what do you see from Sam Richardson, their quarterback, and, and just, you know, what kind of threat is he? You know, he's a dual, dual, dual quarterback. You know, he's, he's a good player. You know, he's, you know, he didn't play against us last year. You know, Jantz came in there and, and had a great game. Then Richardson finished up the rest of the year and has been the guy this year. And he's, you know, they got, they got the run, a couple of good running backs. Uh, the kid from, you know, Dallas Skyline, White is a really good player. They've got a couple of really good receivers, you know, a couple of fast guys and a big guy that's pretty good or it's good. So, I mean, they're, they're a well-balanced football team without question. They do a great job recruiting. They recruit Florida hard. You know, they recruit Texas hard. they got some talent on the football team without any doubt. <laughs> Art, speaking of – Playmakers, and you talked about Tevin Reese earlier about him being one of your go-to guys. But just the numbers on him on his touchdowns, just the fact that so many have been 40-plus yard plays. I mean, it's just off the charts on that. What dimension does he bring to your offense, and and what does that say, I guess, about both him and your offense? Well, I mean, I mean, facts facts don't lie. I mean, that's one thing about it. I mean, we can, we can sit here and 
say whatever we want, and then then somebody will say, well, okay, get out the dictionary and make sure that's how you spell it. I mean, it's there's either truth or not. It, it's true, you know, what you're mentioning about him being an, an effective deep ball threat. And the thing I go to is that, you know, we've had – just in in my short tenure here, you know, we've had David, David Geddes, which is an NFL receiver. You know, we've had, uh, you know, Kendall Wright, NFL receiver. Josh Gordon, NFL receiver. Terrence Williams, NFL receiver. And Tevin Reese, as a junior, was more productive than any of those guys. So we'll roll from there. All right, that's it for Coach. We'll Thank you all very much. Right.